do you see a woman sitting up there in the balcony? And she tried to point out where it was. And I strained to see what she was seeing. And sure enough, I saw it too. I'm Tom Stewart, and this is my paranormal story. Before I start this episode, I just want to thank you for listening. Remember, if you've bought t-shirts or coffee mugs from my website, myparanormalstory.com, be sure to send me a selfie with your swag so I can post it on Facebook or Instagram. And don't forget, everything you buy on the website helps keep this podcast running. So thank you so much for your support. Every now and then, as a paranormal investigator, you get to give back to the community, at least if you're doing it right. And when I was with Rise Up Paranormal, we often would help raise money for local landmarks and charities by doing what we did best, ghost hunting. There were many times that we would voluntarily host ghost hunts with the public in order to raise money. And we did it at places like Fort Adams, Belcourt Castle, and the Payne House, just to name a few. In fact, Rise Up Paranormal still conducts public investigations at the Payne House every summer, and every year they host the Ocean State Paracon, with proceeds going to local charities. In fact, this year the Paracon is July 17th and 18th at Plain Ridge Park Casino in Plainville, Mass., and they're raising money this year for Hope Health's Camp Braveheart, which is a summer camp that helps children and teens help with grieving and loss. If you'd like to know more about the cause, more about the Paracon, you can visit RiseUpParanormal.com or search for Ocean State Paracon on Facebook. Just a quick plug for my friends at Rise Up. Now back in 2011, we were asked to host a public paranormal investigation at the Warner Theater in Torrington, Connecticut to help raise money for the theater. A few dozen people paid admission for the chance to investigate with us for several hours on a Saturday night. Now, this wasn't one of those ghost tours where we tell spooky stories. We actually split everyone up into groups, gave them some of the tools that we use, and led them on actual investigations. And they were able to experience a real investigation with EVP sessions, video and audio reviews, and so on. Everyone had lots of fun, and a few people even had some personal experiences. But one prerequisite for us when agreeing to do public investigations is to let us have the location to ourselves for an investigation on our own. So that way we can get the lay of the land and see what we can uncover before opening it up to the public. So a few months before we did the charity event, on a cold January night, we went into the theater with all of our equipment and conducted our own investigation. The Warner Theater is an old Art Deco theater that was originally built in 1931 by the Warner Brothers Movie Company in order to show first-run movies. With the invention of talking movies, movie theaters were popping up all over the country. And for 30 plus years, the Warner Theater was where locals went to gather and see movies, theatrical plays, and assemblies but it was eventually sold to a private owner in the 1960s who ended up seeing business decline and then couldn't afford the upkeep of the theater as it was slowly deteriorating. Those owners officially closed the theater in 1981 and put it up for sale with no buyers. So the town scheduled it for demolition until a group of citizens stepped in to save it. Calling themselves the Northwest Connecticut Association for the Arts, their newly formed nonprofit raised enough money through grassroots efforts to buy the Warner Theater and eventually refurbish it back to its glory days. Over decades of work, they replaced the outdated seating, restored the Art Deco, and the crushed velvet on the walls. They built a new stage, dressing rooms, and concessions, and they installed new lighting and sound and updated the fire alarm and security systems. And they even bought the building next door and turned it into a school for the arts. Today, the theater is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and offers dozens of performances a year that are attended by over 100,000 patrons. 
The theater has even hosted high school graduations and political debates. But throughout the years, the Warner Theater has also been host to many ghost stories and personal experiences of the paranormal nature. Many workers and patrons have experienced things like voices, footsteps, and apparitions moving around the theater. And there's definitely some tragic history that goes along with these experiences. One of the more popular stories of the Warner Theater is of a ghost nicknamed Murph. Murph is believed to be the spirit of a homeless man who many years ago broke into the theater at night in order to escape the cold, rainy weather outside. But while navigating through the dark theater, he fell down a flight of stairs into the basement and eventually died due to his injuries. To this day, people have claimed to see a ghostly image of a man on the stairs and in the basement hallway. And others have claimed to see the ghostly image of a man lying on the floor at the bottom of those stairs. There's also another story of a young construction worker who was helping to build the theater back in 1931, who fell off the roof and into a vat of boiling hot tar. Plus other people have seen ghostly figures in the seats, especially up in the balcony, and occasionally employees and patrons would hear voices and singing coming from the theater. And of course, a haunting wouldn't be a haunting without the apparition of a little girl. In this case, many people have seen a little girl wearing a yellow hat in the staging area. One of the experiences the manager of the theater told us she had, as well as other employees, was seeing a shadow walking by the window in the projection room. The projection room is way at the top of the theater, and it has two windows in it, one for the movie camera and another one for workers to look through. And several of the current workers and past workers at the theater report that while standing on the stage or in the seating area, they've looked up and seen a shadow walk past that window in the projection room while no one was up there. Naturally, all of us kept looking up there throughout the night, and a couple of us, including me, did see a shadow of someone walking by the window. We were able to document that during these sightings, there was no one up there. But we did send some investigators up there to try and duplicate what some of us saw. And when one of them would walk by the window, you could definitely see their silhouette going by. But it didn't quite look like the shadow we had seen when the projection room was empty. So it definitely wasn't being caused by a person. At one point during the night, I decided to head up to the projection room alone to do an EVP session. EVP stands for Electronic Voice Phenomena. It's when investigators record audio in a certain location and ask questions, hoping a spirit will answer on the recording. I spent about 20 minutes or so up there in the projection room with my recorder, and you can hear, as I first walk in, I ask out loud, who's up here in the booth? And later, when reviewing the audio, I heard a voice answering me. Here's the recording. Who's up here in the booth? One of the scarier parts of the investigation was when I personally scared everyone in the theater. From time to time, I'm known for doing boneheaded things on investigations, and the Warner Theater was no different. There's a second building attached to the theater that houses the offices and performance studios and classes. We weren't investigating that building, and we were specifically told not to go through the door that leads to that building because it would set off an alarm. Now, I don't remember if I was confused as to which door it was or if I had simply just forgotten about the request. But of course, while exploring, I ended up opening that door. And suddenly, a loud alarm started going off and it scared the hell out of everyone. The manager had to come in and shut it off for us. And because it is a modern, sophisticated alarm, 
The manager also had to explain to the police when they showed up that it was just an accident. I tried to blame it on a ghost, but no one was buying it. Anyway, after I had alarmed everyone, the investigating continued. At one point, a couple of investigators were down in the basement. It's basically a maze of hallways with walls and floors made of concrete. But it's also the location for much of the paranormal activity experienced in the theater. And while walking through the hallway in the basement, two of Rise Up's investigators got the chills when they heard with their own ears the sound of someone whistling. It was loud enough for them to think someone was down there with them. Luckily though, they had a recorder with them and they caught the sound of that whistle. And if you listen closely, you can even hear one of the investigators click on their flashlight to quickly look around to see if anyone else was there. Give it a listen. Do you in here? We spent a lot of time investigating the theater. I'd say it was one of our most thorough investigations. We inspected every room, every hallway, every nook and cranny. And we especially took time to record data and info from all the hot spots of activity reported to us by the manager and from stories passed through time. One of those stories was many reports of people seeing a woman sitting up in the balcony. Some would see her sitting as if waiting for the show to start, and others reported seeing her getting up and leaving her seat and slowly walking up the stairs towards the back of the balcony. At one point while on the stage doing an EVP session, one of the other investigators walked over to me and whispered, Tom, do you see a woman sitting up there in the balcony? And she tried to point out where it was, like eight or nine rows up towards the center. And I strained to see what she was seeing in the mostly dark theater. And sure enough, I saw it too. It looked like a white shadowy figure sitting in one of the seats. So we decided to send another investigator up there while we remained on the stage and directed him towards the seat we could see the woman sitting in. And as soon as he got close to the seat, the woman disappeared like a cloud quickly dissolving. And that's when he decided to sit down in the seat. It feels cold, he said, like I was sitting in a refrigerator or something. Now we did have a camcorder on a tripod pointing up at the balcony for the entire investigation, but there were no ghostly women on the footage. The most interesting piece of data or evidence that we collected from the Warner Theater was also from the basement. In fact, it was recorded right at the bottom of the stairs where the legendary Murph had fallen to his death. A couple of investigators were at the bottom of the stairs conducting an EVP session, hoping to record a response from Murph. After about half an hour or so of asking questions, they wrapped up and headed back upstairs. But during evidence review, right at the end of their EVP session, the recording revealed a strange voice. It's hard to make out what it's saying. The voice is kind of distorted. And this seems to happen a lot with EVPs for some reason. In my opinion, I believe the audio gets distorted because it's sound that's being emitted in a spectrum of sound that we can't hear. Sort of like a dog whistle. Except in this case, it's happening on the low end of the sound spectrum, just below what human ears can hear. So when an electronic device records it and plays it back, it comes off as distorted to us, and usually sounds creepy. But I assure you, this voice was not one of the investigators there at the time. And this audio hasn't been manipulated by us in any way. The question is, was this the voice of Murph? The 
My Paranormal Story is written, produced, and narrated by me, Tom Stewart. Music from this episode, courtesy of Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. If you enjoy my stories and would like to support the podcast, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash myparanormal or just click on the donate button on my website at myparanormalstory.com. I also have t-shirts and coffee mugs for sale. Unfortunately, podcasts cost money and your support helps me keep this podcast running. Thank you for your support. Please don't forget to subscribe so you'll know when I've added new episodes and feel free to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Just search for My Paranormal Story. If you have a podcast and you'd like to have me as a guest, or if you'd like to ask me a question or tell me your paranormal story, you can email me at myparanormalstorypodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Tom Stewart, and this is My Paranormal Story.